he's here. Good evening, everybody. Good. How are you? I'm good. Oh, Hope you had a nice Shabbat. We did, thank you. Thank God. Okay. Looks like we finished a chapter, right? It looks like it. Yeah. Shuhan Dalit. We did that one. Okay. So we're starting a new one. All right, looks like it's uh, 76, right? Yeah. Okay, so it says, Suat Bashashit Mutali Kot Kenegda. Another interesting topic here, which really has a lot of uh, practical applications in halacha, this topic. Um, so we're talking about that you have um, excrement there somewhere, right? Uh, or what the mommies call poops, right? They got poops there. So uh, it says, so what does that mean? Like it's behind the glass. So in other words, you can see it, but you can't smell it because it's, you know, there's glass there. It's not in the same domain as you are. Something like that, right? So you're allowed to kikir uh, in that situation because it's not in your domain. And you can't smell it either. So therefore, it's allowed. Papi So what's the Hidush? What's the what's the novel idea here? The novel idea is that even though you see it, it's still you can still pray. So seeing it is not the problem, right? The, the problem is when you smell it. And that's the whole thing. Then you got a problem. Uh, okay, good. So let's see Big Joseph here. So these halachot apply to many other things besides Kiyat Shema. You know, the, like learning Torah, for instance, and prayers and all kinds of things. Because they all depend on this concept that you need to have a, you have to have a clean domain. You have to play in a clean place where it doesn't smell bad. So it has a lot of applications, this halakha, in many things. Okay, so let's see the bit Yosef. So it says like this, right? The bit yourself. Pashut basof perek mishemeto. Where does this come from? This halacha uh, from Masechet Brachot, Kafi Amud Bet. It says over there, um faresh tama. So he explains the reason over there. Mishum the tzoa bekisui talia milta. So it says, you know why? Because the issue of excrement really depends on if it's covered or not. You know, is it exposed? Not exposed, right? The kativ, because it says in the pasuk, varim. 
right? Uh, it says that it says you should cover your excrement, right? Um, what is it talking about there in the verse? It's talking about when you go out to war, uh, that your camp should be holy there, you know? It says, right? Uh, so what does that mean? That when you use the bathroom, you know, in your army camp there, right? Since you don't have a toilet or whatever, nothing there like that. So what you got to do is you got to bury it, right? You got to have like a little uh, shovel as a part of your, uh, right? Uh, um, you, you, part of your entourage there. You got to have a shovels there. So what's a shovel for? Once you make what you have to make, you right, you cover it, you bury it. So this way it's covered. When it's covered, then you can do what you have to do as a Jew, you know, praying, all these things, right? Uh, require that your, your camp should be holy, your encampment should be holy. That's the idea. Okay, good. Um, I do have a question. Sure. Um, uh, let's say you're in the camp. Do you have, I mean, not that you have, how do you clean your hands if there's no water with soil? <laughs> uh, the, yeah, I mean, the truth is that, you know, this, this halakha applies every, any, any time you don't have water. Uh, the, if you don't have water, what you do is, by the way, we're going to learn this pretty soon. It's coming up uh, in the halakha that we'll be learning. Uh, when we do laws of netilat yadayim, you know, over there, we'll be, we'll be talking about that. But, but anyway, the, the point is that when there's no water, the rule is you should, you should rub your hands with something, you know, to clean it, like a towel or, you know, yeah, you know. I mean, you know, you could do it with also with dirt, but today people don't like using dirt. So you could do it with a towel or, you know, with your, uh, with your clothing or whatever, you know, it's just like rub it off with something. That's what you do. Thank you. God bless. Okay, so, uh, but if you do have water, you should wash with water. There's, by the way, just reminded me, there's a story brought down the Talmud. Incredible story, you know? Pretty shocking. Uh, it says, right, that the Romans were persecuting the Jews, you know, at the, towards the end of the second temple there. And Rabbi Akiva, you know, was being persecuted. Eventually, you know what they did, right? They, uh, they killed him. They assassinated him, the Romans. You know, they tortured him and killed him. So what happened was that uh, they, first they put him in jail. What was his crime? But, uh, because he was teaching Torah. That's what the, you know, they forbade to teach Torah. So he was going around and teaching. He wasn't afraid, you know? So, you know, it reminds me of the communists, you know, we grew up in this kind of culture also, you know, when I was a kid. If you, if you teach Torah, they send you to Siberia. That's what, that's what it was, you know? So, so <laughs> not much better than what they had there. So what happened was they put him in jail. And so one of the rabbis goes to visit him there. And they... They brought him, you know, in jail. What do they feed you in a Roman jail? What are they going to feed you, right? Some stale bread and some water. That's it, right? That's all they give you. They don't, they're not going to give you, you know, right, uh, nice nice restaurant quality food like they do today in jail. You know, that today you get good quality stuff there. It's like almost gourmet food there. <laughs> but uh, at least in America, you know, I don't know what's going on in uh, other places. But... Uh, you know, it's just, it's a funny because uh, like in American jail, you know, like if you're Jewish, you can order like black kosher meals <laughs> from, from, you know, with OU, you know, whatever. Uh, so, you know, they, they, they spoil you over there today in jail. It's not the same thing. You know, also in Israel, you know, if you're, if you're like a Haredi, you can get like uh, black kosher meals with badats, you know, everything, whatever. Whatever hechshir you want, they give you there. <laughs> So things are a little bit different today than they were in those days. But, uh, I heard they even allow them, you know, here in America I'm talking about, that what, if there's an Orthodox Jew in jail, they allow them to go to the mikvah once a week, you know, they, they can go every Friday to the mikvah. Can you imagine? This is like a nice, you know, luxury jail there. <laughs> it's pretty, uh, not exactly what we had before. 
But anyway, right, so Rabbi Akiva was in jail. So uh, Roman jail, you know, so what do they give him? Water and the food, bread, right? So what happened was that uh, Rabbi Akiva takes the water, you know, which was like a very limited amount they gave him, you know, not, not in large quantities. So what does he do? He, he takes the water and washes his hands in order to eat the bread. You know what I mean, so the rabbi sees this, his friend, and asks Rabbi Akiva, he says, says, Rabbi, he says, why are you washing your hands? Now you have nothing to drink. You're going gonna, you're gonna, to you're gonna die of thirst like this. Can you imagine? This is what he asked Rabbi Akiva. Now you have nothing to drink. What are you going to drink? They didn't have Coca-Cola there. Right? No Coca-Cola, no Kool-Aid, no nothing, right? So... Uh, Rabbi Akiva says, what can I do? He says, uh, says but my, my, the rabbis, you know, they said that if you, if you transgress the words of the rabbis, you're liable to death. You know, so uh, if, I, if I don't wash my hands for the bread, I'm liable to death. <laughs> so why do I tell you the story, right? To, to show you how important it is to wash your hands. Rabbi Akiva was able, was willing to give up his life just to wash his hands, you know? Can you imagine to risk his life like that? This is how they were, these big rabbis in those days. So anyway, right, nowadays, uh, as I said, right, because of that, as I told you, if you do have water, you should, you should use water. You know, uh, don't, don't say like, oh, well, you know, yeah, well, I only have bottled water. Okay, so use bottled water. What's the problem? What, uh, what it's going to cost you a few pennies? What, you, you're being a... Uh, you're being frugal now all of a sudden. Use bottled water, so what? Wash your hands. Right, uh, so anyway, right, as we said, that um, only if you don't have water, then you can use those other things. Okay, very good. So let's see Shulchan <clears throat> That's one of the sources in the Gemara, by the way. There's another source also, a different place. And it says that a person who transgresses the words of the sages, he's liable to death. So Rabbi Akiva was worried about that. You know, that's why he wanted to wash his hands. He didn't want to be liable to death from the sages, who were his friends, by the way. You know, these were his buddies. Those are the sages. Okay, so uh, let's go to Shulchan Ruch. Right? If you have excrement, which is, uh, you know, behind glass, right? In other words, it's covered. You're allowed to read Kiyachima there. Even though you see it. Right? By way of the glass. Because the, the, the Torah requires that it should be covered. It says, you should cover it, it says there in the Torah. And it's covered. There you go, right? Uh, glass is a good covering. Why not? Nothing gets through there, right? No smell, no nothing. Okay, very good. So that's the story there. That's, that's Shuchan Ruch Aleph. Let's go to Bet. Go back to the tour. So it says in the tour, Oh, so what about if you have excrement, which is inside like a little uh, hole, you know, in the ground? So what do you do there? So it says very simple, right? Cover the hole with your shoe and, uh, and read, read like that. So meaning what? That once you cover it, as we said, right? There's no, there's no issue there. There's no smell. And that should do the trick, right? So therefore you just cover it with your foot and you read it like that. So why is it talking about that it's in a hole? Because when it's in a hole, that means you don't have to actually, you know, touch it with your feet, uh, just like you, you know, cover the hole. So that makes it easier. That's the whole thing. Um, 
Okay. Otherwise, it wouldn't be so practical to do that. So look what he says, right, in the tour. He says afterwards, but if the sandal was touching it, then it's asur. What does that mean? If, if, the, if the shoe is touching the excrement, right, itself, then it's forbidden. Because it's on your clothes, you know? So that's already a problem. So the only way you can do this is if it's in a hole, as we said, right? Because this way, your shoes won't be touching the excrement. That's the idea. Okay, so let's see the uh, it yourself here. So it says bet yourself, right? The im haya sandalon soa beguma, right? So it says bet yourself. Sham. It says over there in the Gemara. Amar Amar Rava says Rava soa beguma maniach sandalon alia. So it says, right, if you have excrement in the hole, you put your shoe on it, you know, place it there. The correct kiachaman, you can read kiachaman like that. Be'amine rav mor bere deravina. So he asked this rabbi asked him, so what about if it's it's sticking to his shoe? Can you still do that like that? Uh, so my what's the halacha? So the answer the gemara gives is teko, right? Teko means there's no answer, right? They don't have an answer. Right? They weren't sure about it. Uh, so, so you hear from from here, you learn something important, by the way. Not always there's an answer to every question. So don't be embarrassed. If you don't know what the answer is, say, I don't know. You know, don't 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 think, oh, if I don't give them an answer, they think they'll think I'm stupid, you know. Uh, why why are you being such an egomaniac? What uh, you know, if you don't know, just say I don't know. Rabbi, question. Yeah. <laughs> What's yes. the difference if it's uh, your your shoe is no gear but touching it, versus if it's uh, uh, dvuka? It's still, they're still touching. If it's sticking on yeah, your shoe, still thing. touch yeah, it. That's the same thing. But when it's in the hole, it's not touching it. That's the whole thing. You know what I mean? So, but why why did the answer say teiko? They should have said it's a sur. If it's because the rabbis weren't sure. You know what I mean? In other words, you're now you're doing like reverse logic over here. Okay. So what does that mean? Because the tour said it's Asur, you don't think the Gemara should say the same thing. No, just the opposite, right? The tour learns it from the Gemara. You know what I mean? So then we have to find out why the tour forbade, even though the Gemara doesn't know the answer. You got it? Right. Okay, so it's the timeline. So, so we learn from the Gemara. They don't learn from us. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's the whole thing. <laughs> so don't reverse, the, don't reverse the, the logic. You know what I mean? Right. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah, so I... we're, we're not there yet. In other words, we're still we got a few steps to go. But just wanted to point that out, right? That don't be embarrassed to say I don't know. Mm -hmm. It's very cool to say that. It's very. If you want to be a cool guy, say I don't know. That's what it says in Gemara Masechet Brachot, right? Accustom yourself to say that I don't know. If you don't know, say the truth. Don't lie. Don't cheat. Don't make up stories. You know, um, there's there's one midrash like this. You know, they say that one time they came to Rabbi Akiva. You know, one day they asked him three questions in halacha. You know, and all three of them he didn't know. <laughs> so he told them, "I don't know. I'm sorry." <laughs> you would think, you know, no, he'll make up some answer. You know, he'll guess. You know, educated guess. No, no, no. In halacha, you don't know edu educated guess. Either you know or you don't know. Did you learn a bit yourself? Did you learn a Shulchan Aruch? If you don't, if you didn't learn, how are you gonna know what's the answer? What are you gonna? How are you gonna guess? Right? There's no way to guess. There's no way to figure it out. So therefore, right, train yourself to say, I don't know. The Gaon Levina also says something about this. You know what he says, right? He says that if you if you make up an answer about something you don't know, they punish you for that, big time. You know, they they nail you for that. So watch out. <laughs> Right, so don't make up stories. Because you know what it is? You're like, you're taking the words of God, you know, and turning it into some kind of a quiz, you know, some kind of a you know, mind game, you know. What, 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 Halakha is the word of God. Don't make up stories. 
I mean, make sure you know what, what it is before you say. That's being responsible, you know? So that's the responsibility. So the Gemara says, Teko, right? We don't know what's the answer. So Katava Rosh, because of that, the Rosh writes, right? Where do we learn, by the way, the, the way to learn the Gemara properly? From the Rishonim, right? The early authorities. The Rosh was one of the big ones, right? So it says the Rosh, Maniach Sandalo Alea the Kore. So he says, you can put your, your shoe on, on it, right? On top of the hole and read. Oh, so he says, we don't say that the, that the shoe is bottle, right? It's nullified uh, against his body. And therefore, it's not a part, it's not really a cover. Remember, we, we talked about that regarding covering your head with your hands, right? Let's say, if you don't have a kippah. Remember, we talked about that? So we said, right, you can't really do that. Why? Because, because you're, it's a part of your body. So you're covering your body with your body. What, is, what kind of thing is that? You can do like your mom and do a napkin. I'm sorry? Do like your mom and do a napkin. She puts a napkin <laughs> on her face. Okay. Yeah, the napkins are a big thing, you know, with the, with, the, uh, with the traditional Jews, you know, the ones that are not so religious, you know, they all come with napkins. So that's the way it is. <laughs> but the truth is, you know, the napkin is good. It does cover your hair, you know what I mean? <laughs> uh, I mean, I'm not talking for a woman, by the way, right? I'm talking about for a man. I know, I know. For a woman, it's not really, not really going to do the job. Wasn't there um, yeah. someone in the Congress that was doing that? They were covering their head while they were, like, eating or something? I don't know. Uh, like yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe Lieberman, right? This guy, he was, he was religious. Joe Lieberman. Really? But anyway. <laughs> he was using his hand, though. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm not really sure about that. As I said, I don't want to make up stories, you know, make sure we got the story right before we say. <laughs> so I don't want to make up any stories about anybody. Right? Uh, but anyway, right? Uh, unless we were sure we got a tradition, we have a masoret about that, right? A good tradition. So anyway, right? As we said, uh, you can't cover your body with your body. So therefore comes the Roshan tells you, you shouldn't think that the, that the shoe was a part of your body. It's not. It's clothing, right? So therefore, you can do that. So then he goes on. So advoka besandalo. But if the excrement is, is sticking to the, uh, to the shoe, now, what's the din, right? Uh, that's what the Gemara asks. So explains the Rosh, perush, What's it then if the sandal is touching the shoe, right? I'm saying the, the excrement, right? The shoe is touching the excrement. What's it then with that? So Gemara answers Teko, right? So we don't know what's it then. The whole Teko, look what it says to Rosh, right? So it says every time the Gemara says Teko, we, we, go, we go stringent. Why is that? Because since we don't know, you know, let's be on the safe side, right? This is the this is the approach of the Rosh, right? Uh, I can always I, I can always tell you, by the way, I can already tell you that the approach of the Rambam is not like that. The approach of the Sephardi rabbis, you know what it is? Depends if it's from the Torah. If it's from the Torah, then it's a doubt of the Torah. We go stringent, right? If it's from the rabbis, doubt of the rabbis, we go lenient. You know what I mean? So the Rosh here says to be stringent, and the Torah was his son, so he went like the Rosh. Right, but let's see what the Rambam says, right? Let's, let's see what the other Rishonim say. Let's take a look. That's what it says also in the Rambam. So what does that mean? That we have to be machmir here, we have to be stringent. So we'll see why that is, right? Uh, probably for a different reason. We'll see, right? Perish, Yonah explains, so he says, right, if you have excrement in the hole, you just like cover it with your foot, with your, with your shoe. It's allowed. Because since you don't have a bad smell coming to him, it's like if it was covered with a kli. Dame. Even if it's touching 
his uh, sandal, right? So it seems like he just doesn't agree with the with the with the Rosh and the Rambam, right? He seems to be lenient, even when it's touching. Well, my the the by more brother Ravina the Wukab is the law. Ah, so he says, what about the the question that they asked in the Gemara? If it's sticking to your uh, shoe, right? What's going on with that? My milta be'afer nafshahi. So he says. So he says, that's a different story. That's talking about that you're walking, you know, on, on the way. <clears throat> or standing in one place. So he says it's, it's referring to the fact that it like really stuck to your shoe. In other words, you can't get it off. Like, you know, you have to, you would have to scrape it with a knife. It's stuck there, you know. So then... Right, my then my take then then it's then it's no that we don't have an answer. The whole teko de isu al chumra. So it says, oh, he also says right that every teko is we go all the stringent. Even though it's touching his uh, shoe, mutar, it's it's allowed. But if it really got stuck to it, then it's forbidden. So that's that's a, that's the opinion of Rabbeinu Yona. So he differentiates between touching and sticking, right? Two different things. Asur. So he says, Rabbeinu wrote, She looked at Rosh 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 So that's the halacha, right? But just to give you a little bit of a caveat there, right? As I told you, that the Rambam doesn't really hold like the Rosh. What does that mean in general, I'm talking about? In this case, he does. But in general, the Rambam holds. That if the teko is from the from the Torah, we go stringent. It's a doubt about the Torah. If the teko is from from the rabbis, we go lenient because it's a rabbinical. When there's a doubt, rabbinical doubt, right? So then, why is the Rambam machmir here? Anybody have an answer for me? Why is the Rambam machmir here? Oh, kiyat shema is the oraita. Oh, kiyat shema is the oraita. Yeah, okay, kiyat shema is the oraita, but. What about the what about the excrement? That's the question, right? You know what I mean? Is it the writer from that side as well? The, in other words, the prohibition to read the Shema when there when there's excrement is that from the Torah or from the rabbis? In, uh, from the rabbis. I'm giving, I'm giving you a big hint over here now. You better you better get the right, right answer. Kabot Harav, I'm sorry. Didn't Hashem said in a part huh? in the written Torah? Didn't Hashem said that if there's excrement around to bury it, and therefore can we oh, say? Oh, there you go. There's a wise lady over there from Florida. <laughs> okay, so that's the answer. You understand that really, as we already said, right? We bought the pasuk. It's from the Torah. You understand? Oh, so now we know why the Rambam is machmir because. Because this is from the Torah, this prohibition. But, right, let's give you a little bit of a, right, of a insight over here, right? Which is that what's from the Torah? Only excrement, right? But when it comes to urine, that's rabbinical. So there, right, that will be a different story. You understand? We're going to get to that now. The prohibition of urine is from the rabbis. The prohibition of excrement is from the Torah. Because the Torah doesn't talk about urine. Okay. I thought there was, I thought there was no excrement back then. That everything was uh, what, purified. Everything, everything into was food. going to heaven. What did you? Everything was going to heaven. No, no. Everything was purified into food. Oh, <laughs> oh my God! <laughs> yeah, you're talking about the man. You know, when they were in the desert, they were eating the man. So that was like totally digested, you know, nothing was left over. Right. Because it was heavenly yeah. food. But, you know, we're talking about here, we're eating like, you know, bread, you know what I mean? Even, even, I Bukharian, even Bukharian bread, you know? It's not heavenly, yeah. right? It's regular right. food. <laughs> right? You know, some, some people may think that Bukharian bread is like heavenly, but it's not really heavenly. It's just, it tastes good, but it's, it's regular food. <laughs> So that's the same thing, you understand? Same thing with Georgian bread, right, David? Okay, whatever. I guess no comment over there. So that's the that's the idea. So uh, that's the reason why they're machmir. So therefore, the halacha is right that we have to be stringent over here. 
So what does that mean? That if it's touching the shoe, you shouldn't read the Kriyat Shema like that. So what should you do? Scrape it off, right? Or, you know, take, put it in your shower, wash it off, and then, right, so you can read after. <laughs> no other choice. Okay, very good. So we'll go to Gimel. Shulchan Aruch, Rabbi. Yeah, I'm sorry? Shulchan Aruch. Oh, thank you. Ah, we didn't do Shulchan Aruch? Ah. No. Okay, so let's see that. It says the Shulchan Aruch. So'a beguma, right? If you have an excrement in the hole, maniach sandalo alea bekore, right? You can put your foot there, your, your, your shoe, right? And read like that because you're covering it like that. And obviously, right? I mean, we're talking about a small hole because otherwise your shoe won't be able to cover it. You understand what I mean? If it's a wide hole, one shoe won't do the trick. <laughs> you're gonna need something wider than that. Obviously, right? We're talking about it's totally covered, right? That's the idea. Okay, so then we go on. Uh, so it says, it's considered to be covered. And since the bad smell doesn't get, now get to him because it's totally covered, mutar, that's why it's allowed. Ah, but as long as what? That your shoe's not touching it, right? Otherwise, you got a problem. As we said, right? Teko. Okay, very good. So we'll go to Gimel. So good, let's see the tour now. There's a lot of issues here, by the way, especially for, for mommies, you know, when they're changing diapers and stuff, there's all kinds of questions that come up about this issue. Okay. I do have a question. When it comes to um, the, the women changing their diapers, they have to wash their hands that frequently as soon as, you know, they change the diaper, then they have to wash their hands away. Absolutely, again. absolutely, absolutely. Again again. When, you, when you change the diaper, you should wash your hands. Okay. Even if you do it very, you know, um, clean. Yeah. You, sh you should still wash your hands. No, wash your hands meaning with netila, excuse me, not just. No, you don't soap. need a cup for that. You don't need a cup. Just soap, regular. Yeah, you don't need soap either. Just regular water. <laughs> oh. Okay. Soap is for hygiene, you know, it's not really for halakha, you know what I mean? Okay. Halakha doesn't, never talks about soap. Okay, well, I, I assume that regular was with soap. So. Just hygiene, you know. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Okay, very good. I remember when we had the COVID issue, you know? Everybody was getting on my case, like, you know, uh, they were complaining about me. You know, I was like the black sheep of the COVID world. So what happened was that uh, my daughter would tell me, you know, she would say, Ava, you know? Why don't you why don't you use soap? You know, or use some, you know, what do they call that? Desanitizer, whatever, you know. Purell. I was like telling her, leave me alone. <laughs> I don't want any soap. I don't want desanitizer. Leave me alone. I just wash with water. That's enough for me. You know, but she used to get on my case, you know, but just whatever. I mean, I'm I'm an old-fashioned guy, you know, that <laughs> I really need so much in the uh, yeah. So I, I only use soap when, when there's an issue with dirt, you know, like it's, my hands are dirty. But otherwise, I don't use it, you know. I, you know it's, it's not my custom, what can I tell you? I'm from the old school. I'm, old, I'm an old school guy. <laughs> Talking about diapers, um, let's say there's, there's a room and the mom changes the diaper and throws it in the trash can. Right. It's not buried and it is there, it is wrapped, but it's not buried. And you can still smell it. Can a person pray in there? No, right? Oh, good question. Yeah, yeah, that's a good question. I was afraid you were gonna to get to that. <laughs> All the mommy rules, right? Now we're getting to the mommy rules. Okay, very good. So let's go to the mommies. <laughs> so, <laughs> right, it's been a long time, you know, since I've been in that stage in my life, <laughs> changing diapers. So uh, yeah, it's, been, it's been quite a while. So uh, uh, the rule is like this, okay? That just like we learned over here, same thing. If the diaper is in the garbage bag in the gar in the, or in the garbage bin 
and the bin has a cover, so you got no problem. You know what I mean? It's covered. Even um, if you can still smell. So that's the that's the thing, right? That you know, usually when you cover it, you won't smell it. You know what I mean? Uh, you may have to wait like a few seconds, you know, for the smell to dissipate. But if it's really a good cover, you shouldn't smell it. But if you can, you have to. But if you do, if you do smell it, uh, so here, right, again, we get into the differentiation between urine and excrement, right? Excrement is from the Torah, as we said. So if you can smell the excrement, you need to take the garbage. The, right, the, the rabbis decreed on that. Outside, right? Yeah, you can't, you can't, you can't, uh, you can't pray there. But when it comes to urine, right, uh, that's very different, a little bit different. So, uh, the, but the truth is, you know, um, I, I'm not saying it right. But if if you smell urine or if you smell excrement, you can't you can't pray there. This is the, this is halacha. But when you cover it, you shouldn't be able to smell it. You know that's the thing. You know unless the cover is not good, I don't know whatever. But even if you cannot smell the excrement, if it's not covered, you can't pray there. Right. That's the difference between urine and excrement. Right. Urine. If you don't smell it, you can pray there. But again, right, I have to be more precise. I'm not telling you precisely there. I didn't say precisely. What I meant to say is like this. If the, we're going to get to this, by the way, eventually we're going to learn all these things. But, you know, just to give you a preview a little bit, the rule is like this, okay? If the urine is in your domain, so what does that mean? It's in the same room as you are, Okay. Whether uh, or or excrement, right? Either way, you can't pray there. You can't read there. You can't study there. You know what I mean? But the difference is like this: that let's say the urine is outside the uh, outside, right, in a different room. So there, right, the rule is that when when it comes to the excrement, if you smell it, you know, you can't you can't read there because it's from the Torah. But when it comes to urine, we're, we're more lenient. We're gonna we're gonna get to all these cases, you know. I'm just giving you like a, just from my memory, you know. But let's let's make sure we got everything right. So we'll go a little bit slow by slowly, little by little. So um, as we said, right? So here's the Bet Yosef. Uh, let's see first the tour. Let's see first the tour. Right, so it says the tour like this. They passed, you know, excrement in front of him. You're not allowed to read one second in front of you. Look what it says, right? So it says the mouth of the pig is considered to be like excrement because they're always dirty, you know, these pigs. So they always have like, they, they got their nose and every, everything, every dirty thing. So therefore it's the same thing. They like to rummage, you know, in all kinds of excrement and stuff, so the pigs. Dirty animals, you know. Uh, so it says, even if the pig came from the river, right? So apparently you would think it's clean. You know, but no, it's, uh, we still assume that's dirty. <clears throat> okay, so that's the tour. Let's go to the bit yourself. Yeah. So says Bet Yosef. Right, where is this? Where is the source for this? It's also there. Masechet Brachot, Kaf Hayamud Aleph, Plukta de Abaye and Rava. It's a it's a machloket between Abaye and Rava. Beil Chatak Rava. So this is Halach is like Rava. It says it says there. In Gemara, the Asu. What does that mean? It's forbidden. So therefore, right, you got to be careful about that. Opi uh, Chazir. Then what about the pig, right? It's also the Sham Memema de Rapapa. It's also there in the Gemara. It says Rapapa, the Akshinan Pshita. So Gemara asks, right? It's, 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 it's simple, right? I mean, it's obvious. Why do you need to tell me that the pig is like, you know, considered like excrement? Now, we know they're always rummaging the excrement, right? Pirish Rashi, Rashi explains like this Pshita de Pi Hazir, and no, Belot Soa, because always, right, the, the mouth of the pig has always got excrement there. Incredible. Mehadrina, right? And the answer, Lord Sicha, Afa Gab the Salik Minara. Ah, so he says, you know what? What the, what the Hidush is? What's our novel idea? 
that even though it came out of the river, so you may think it's all clean, right? It's got, got water on it, you know, but no, still we, we assume that it's dirty. So says Rabbi Yona, Komar, Ah, look what it says, incredible, right? That the bathing doesn't help the pig. It's still dirty. Right? Why? Because since it, 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 it sullies the mouth, right, by going into excrement. By the way, why does it go into excrement? Because it eats it. They, they eat their own excrement. That's what they do. They're disgusting animals, you know, the pigs. They're repulsive. Uh, Hashem should uh, right, uh, have mercy on those people who eat these things. Right? Uh, so, anyway, right? Uh, since it's all the time, right, in excrement, its mouth, uh, so we consider it to be like, um, you can't wash it, like, you know, like um, something which is always, you know, uh, a, a utensil, which is especially for, for excrement, you know, you can't clean that. There's no way to clean it. Um, okay, there you go. So, Vedashi Rambam Katab Gabet So he says, You should know. The Rambam says, regarding right, the excrement which is passing by, and also the, uh, the pig, as we said, So says the Rambam, How far do they have to be from you to, to be able to read these things? So he says, You need four amot, right? So that's two meters, right? So if they're two meters away, and as you said, right, if you can't smell it, then you're good. That's only when, when you're outdoors, right? When you're indoors, the story is a little bit different, as we're going to see. When you're outdoors, the, the smell dissipates, you know, and the wind, right, whatever, with the air. So then, two, you know, two meters is enough for Amot. But if you're, if you're indoors, right, the whole room is considered to be like one domain. So then it's not going to help you. Um, so it says with Yosef, it seems from his words, that even though they're passing by him, once they went away for Amot, it's allowed. So it's not the same thing as an excrement, right, which is in one place. So there he says, if it's in one place, it's not moving, right? You've got a distance even more, right? Until you can't see it. You have to go that far. Can you imagine? Until you can't see it. And we're talking about outside. Right? So since this, this is like passing by him, then it's allowed for Amot. That's what says also, Maria, Yitzchak, Abuhab. But he says, I don't find anything in the Talmud that teaches this. So in other words, uh, these rabbis said so, but I don't, I don't really see a source. That's what he's trying to tell you, right? So therefore it says, it seems to me that it's talking by behind you. Then it's good enough. They should pass for Amot. But if it's in front of you, then you've got to distance yourself right, until you can't see it. That's what sees also from Rabbeinu. He wrote all here also, Rabbeinu, on the tour. That you're not allowed to read next to it. He relied on what he wrote in uh, chapter uh, 69, uh, 79, I'm sorry, 79. Over there, he talks about the issue of how much, how far you have to be. So, um, yeah, that's the bit yourself. Let's see the Shulchanuch. They're passing excrement in front of him. You're not a good like that. So the mouth of the pig is like, is like uh, excrement. says even if it's coming up from the river, it doesn't help to, to debate. To have a get because it's considered like a like, like an instrument of excrement, basically, right? 
whatever. What do you want to call it? Gref Shalei. Okay, so that's the story with that. Let's see what else we got here. Okay, so we got about 10 minutes. Let's see what we can do. So let's go back to the tour. So it says here, um, right? Let's say the excrement was on his skin, right? But it's covered with your clothing. So what's halacha, right? On the one hand, it's covered. On the, on the other hand, it's, like it's on your body. Right? Or he put his hand inside the bathroom, through a hole or something. But he doesn't smell anything bad. So what goes on with that? Ravuna Amar Mutar. So Ravuna says you're allowed to read like that. The quote. But Rav Chasda Amar Asu. Rav Chasda says it's forbidden. The quote, the quote like that. To read like that. So he says, Rach Pasak Kirach. <laughs> so he says, Rabbeinu Hananel, who's the Rach, Paskin like the Rach, who's the Rav Chasda. <coughs> Two Rachs. So, uh, yeah. So what does that mean? Rav Chasa says it's not allowed. Um, the Rif Pasak kera, kera, kera vuna, And the Rif Pasak is like Ravuna, that it's allowed. So who do we go like, right? These are two big rabbis. Rabbeinu Hananel and the Rif. Okay. If I'm not mistaken, by the way, uh, the Rif was the Talmud of Rabbeinu Hananel. Two big chachamim. And the Rambam is not passing on this halacha, Kabbalah? Uh, okay, we'll get there. We'll get there. <laughs> We're just getting started. <laughs> We're just getting started. But uh, here, right, you have the uh, Rabbeinu Hananel, who was really concerned. This is, by the way, the the, the period is switch, switching over from the Geonim to the Rishonim. Because Rabbeinu Hananel was from the Geonim. And the Rif was the first generation of the Rishonim. So this was like a border period, right? Somewhere like, you know, where they switched from one period to the other. But still, you know, two big chachamim here. Pasak ke kiravuna. dat Adonia So it's also the Rosh seems to agree with the riff. Right? So you got already two out of three here. Aval so'ab if he tabat, but he says, ah. If if the excrement is in his anus, right? In other words, where it comes out, So then, even if it's covered, you're not allowed to read. Even if you can't see it, covered, whatever. So you can't see it when he's standing, but if he sits, you could see it. And this is the reason why, by the way, uh, when a person goes to the bathroom, you know, Make sure you clean yourself good because you know if you don't, and you can see the excrement, you know when you sit, so you're like you're you can't even pray like that. You can't pray. You can't say kiyat shema. Can't learn Torah like that. So you got a problem, you know. So you got to make sure you clean yourself good. As 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 the Gemara says, you know we're not angels. You know what I mean. The Torah wasn't given to angels, so we can't be hundred percent you know clean over there in that place. But you shouldn't at least see it on the outside. At least that much, you know. Okay. I have one friend, by the way. I'm not going to tell you his name, but maybe he'll tell you. But I have one friend, you know, he told me, he says, Rabbi, he says, when I go to the bathroom, you know, then I go and take a shower, he says. I, you know, he goes into the shower. Because he wants to be really, really clean, you know? So there you go, right? There are some people who are very... <laughs> every time they go into the shower... <laughs> David, <Okay. you're> not... <laughs> I'm sorry? David. <laughs> yeah, you know, I was, I was, wait, I was waiting. Uh, I'll, I'll wait for them to say it, right? Whoever wants to say it, whatever it is. But... David's not copping to that one, okay. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's, no, but, you know, it's, like, it's really, uh, you know, it's like, I guess... 
it's a special, you know, attribute, whatever you want to call it. I don't know, but you don't have to be that, you don't have to be that stringent, you know, to go into the shower. But right, at least you gotta clean yourself good. Okay, so uh, right, as we said, uh Farshim, some explain that Rav Huna lo share betsua or besaro. So some say that Rav Huna doesn't really allow when it's on your skin. Only a place which is covered, you know, automatically covered, like by itself. In other words, it's a way to be covered. Even without clothing, right? Let's say, for instance, like your underarms, you know, like or something, you know, it's always covered. Uh, right, exactly. Like what I say, right? your underarms, right? Things like this. Okay, I have if I have, uh, okay, let's go to the Bet Yosef here. So, says Bet Yosef, right? Uh, where's the source for this? Sham Itamar, it says the Gemara there in Masechet Brachot. So, Al Besaro, if he has excrement on his, on his skin, right? Or let's say his hands were in the bathroom. Right? Ravuna Amara Mutali Kokiachma. Ravuna says you're allowed to read like that. And by the way, in those days, you know, the bathrooms were not the bathrooms we have today, right? Because Today, right, the excrement leaves the bathroom, right, and gets flushed down. In those days, it was all like pretty much there, you know. So the situation was much worse there, you know. Uh, so therefore, their bathrooms, you know, had ruach ra, they had, you know, evil spirit there, much more than ours, you know, because ours are more clean. So by regarding ours, you know, there's a machlok. Some say there is ruach ra there. Some to say there is no ruach ra. Because it gets flushed down, different opinions about that. Okay, whatever. But in those days, really, the situation was bad, you know. Like those outhouses, you know, that they used to have. You know what I mean? They like really smelly, very, 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 very deadly, right? Very, very, uh, very dangerous there. <laughs> so we're talking about that, right? That you put your, you put your hands inside there. All right. So what do I care if you put your hands there? Because that means you have wachra on your hands, you know. Okay, whatever. So anyway, right, as we said, Ravuna Amar Mutali Kov Kiachimah. Ravuna says it's allowed to read like that. Avchazda Amar Asu. Avchazda says it's Asu. Kov Kiachimah. Pirash Rashi. Rashi explains Yadda Bebet HaKiseh. What does it mean that his hands are in the bathroom? Mechitza Yesh Beno Leben Bet HaKiseh. So he says there is a partition between him and the bathroom. Pashat Yadda Bifnim. But what he did was he stuck his hands inside there. Inside the partition. Mifaresh B'Gemara explains the Gemara. What's the reason of Huna? Because it says in the Pasuk, Tehilim, right? So what does it have to do with our discussion? So he says, right, that the Tama de Rav Chazda, Mishum, what's the reason of Rav Chazda? Because it says, it's written over there in Tehilim, Kol Atzmontai Tomar Adonai. <laughs> it's hard to really understand what these verses have to do with our discussion. We'll have to see, right? Micha Mocha, Uperesh Rashi. So Rashi explains, Kola Neshama, Pe de Achotem, Bichala Hilul, Hilul. So it says, right, that when it says, Kola Neshama, Telel Yahaluya, which means, right, literally, all, every, every soul shall praise God, right? So it says that uh, Rashi explains, that the neshama includes uh, the mouth and the and the nose. So what does that mean? What the mouth and the nose are the soul? No. What it means to say is that the neshama is like we're, we're talking like a euphemism for a person, you know. So he's a part. That's a part of the person that's praising God, right? So therefore, below shalevarin, but the other parts of the body, no. So what does that mean? You see from there uh, that when it comes to your mouth and nose, you got to be clean. But the other parts, not so much. Tabarosh says the Rosh. So ah, al besaro. But if you have excrement on your on your body, uh, on your skin, or shayu yada bevetakise, or his hands were in the bathroom, as we said, peru shaytat so al besaro. He says it's like this. That explanation is like this. There was excrement on his skin. 
it's covered with the clothing, right? Or he stuck his hands inside the bathroom, as we said. But he doesn't smell anything bad. So says the Rosh, like Rav Chazda. The Asur, Asur. Oh, look what he says, right? It was surprising. Why? Because Rav Chazda was a Talmud of Rav Huna. You know, so usually, right, the rule is we don't pass like the Talmud, we pass like the Rebbe. You know what I mean? So if that's the case, then why do we go like Rav Chazda? So So we go, we go stringent. That's the reason why. Even though he was a Talmud, he was only a student. He was a disciple, but we go stringent here. The Rip says no. We go like Rav Huna, we go lenient. What's the reason why? One thing is because he was his Rebbe, right? As we said, Rav Huna was his Rebbe of the Rav Chazda. So of course we go like the Rebbe, that's what the Rif says. Uh, the Rav Chazda. The, oh, the, the, the Makshina Mine. There's also, we had a question there in the Gemara about this. The Perk Amar they ask, a, they ask a question about that in the Gemara. So meanwhile, they weren't really sure that this is correct, what he said. They, 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 they objected against it. Papa asur because our Papa said that tzoa in its place is asur. They call kirchima perush tzoa befiat tabad. That means that's in the anus. Hey, hey, how how does that come? How does that come out? Eh, the nire if it's if it's if you can see it, if it's visible. Pshita, it's pashut, right? Simple. Very the lonely that, but if it's not visible, lonely to not Torah. So then what? What do you want me to do? Right, as we said, right? The Torah wasn't given to angels. We're not angels. You know what I mean? So what do you want me to do now? You want me to clean my whole body from, from excrement inside? Like, I can't do that. Right? There's no way for me to do that. So I do the best I can, you know, according to my ability. That's the best I can do. So Hashem doesn't expect you to be an angel. Okay, good. So. So it says, therefore, the Gemara says, yeah, you're right. What are we talking about here? We're talking about when he's standing, you can't see it. But when he's sitting, you can see it. Ah, so he's not we're, not, we're not asking him to be an angel, you know, just asking him to be conscientious. Clean yourself good, right? That's what we're asking him to do. We're not talking about angelic things over here. So is that what he wrote, that when you have the excrement in its place, that there's a lot of smell there. It smells bad, right? But when it's not in its place, the smell is not so bad. Since it asks about this from this, you learn from here that you see that it's a halacha, right? And the Rosh, uh, they say they agree with that. So they agree with the riff, basically, right? So that's what it seems out good. So right here, you see, right, something interesting that even though, as we said, Rabbeinu Hananel is from the Geonim, but nevertheless, right, since the majority of the Rishonim went against him, so we don't pass like him, right? So you see, right, that uh, sometimes you don't go like the Geonim. If a lot of the Rishonim are arguing with the Geonim, even though they were in a later period. That's the way it is. Okay, good. Because you know what it is? That the Rishonim were, were on a very high level, you know? So they, they didn't have any problems arguing with the Geonim. They, they, they were, especially the earlier ones, you know? They were able to do it. Like the Rambam, for instance, you know? He had no problem arguing with the Geonim. When he had to, you know? When he had no choice, you know what I mean? Well, he felt that they were wrong, whatever. So, uh, so he says, I guess maybe we'll stop here. Yeah, still a long way to go. So I guess we'll stop here and we'll continue next time. Okay, thanks for coming. Be blessed with wealth, health, happiness. Hashem should give you a nice, clean, good smelling place always to, to pray and to learn. Always smell good like flowers, you know, and uh, right, beautiful fragrances like Gan Eden. So we'll see you tomorrow and uh, be holy and happy and Chazak uh, Baruch. Thank you. All the best. Thank you so much.